Then we got Brett. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. Awesome. Well, so glad, so happy you're here. You have a new movie. It's called Disciples in the Moonlight. You're <laughs> you act in it, and you're also the director, right? How is that? How how did that come about? Yeah, so it was. I, I wore a lot of hats on this project for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> did a lot of so in front and behind the camera. Uh, of ten over ten years ago, a friend of mine who ended up writing this screenplay, he came to me with this nugget of an idea that was really provoked by a question. What would it be like if the Bible was illegal? And I was so perplexed by that con that, that question, and it led to such intrigue in my heart and my mind. And he, he went and re wrote the script and graciously invited me on this project to direct it and then inevitably to play one of the lead characters. And I was, I was captivated because the premise is these seven characters are tasked with smuggling the Bible to underground churches in a version of America where the Bible is illegal. And so all of that just created such intrigue for me. But the thing that really drew me to the project more than anything was the question that came to my mind immediately after I read the script. And that was, how would I respond? If this was my reality, what would I do? Would I comply with the government? Would I... Uh, would I stand against the government? Would I go into hiding? You know, all of these different types of questions and things that we explore in the movie were just so heavy on my heart and my mind. And I wanted to see this movie come to life because I want people to treasure the Word of God and I want them to uh, to live sold out for Jesus Christ. Powerful. Um, I want to start right there for me. Like I, I have a few questions. But one of them, like, I think the main one is what is the word of God, right? Because I, I think for the most part, like people understand there's there's a book and most Christians would call it the word of God. Right. Right. But from your vantage point, like if if that were taken from us, if that is no longer accessible for us, is that the word of God? Is that is that like the only source where we as like Christians and listeners of of almighty God. Like that's, I mean, in a sense it is right. But that's, that's why it was like perplexing for me. Yeah. Cause it like, it brought that question, like the same question. Wow. Like, cause, okay. So I'll be honest, right. For, uh, for a little bit, I thought I could handle living without the Bible. Right. Like I know enough scripture or this or that, but then I thought, man, like uh, we are like the Bible is, <laughs> it's, it's my source. Like I read it every day, right? I go to it every day. If I have, even if I had an altered version of it, how would I react? So what is the word of God for you? Why yeah. is this so important? It's a great question. It's such an important question because, uh, I believe what's happened in our society is we're trying to, we're trying to change what the Bible is, what it is and what it means to people. Uh, the Bible, the word of God I believe is God's love letter to humanity. It's the way that he has revealed himself to us. It's the way that he's made himself known. It's how we can know him, how we can get to understand this God that created us and created us with a purpose and sought to save us. Um, and so first and foremost, we have to understand that this is his revelation to us. It's not us figuring out the, the secrets of the universe. It's, it's basically his love letter. And then it's also a guidebook. It, it is a guidebook of how we should live, how we should think, how we should act. It's a guide to how we can find eternal life in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And what's happening, I believe, in our society is people are trying to, to alter it and change what it says. People I've even heard say that the Bible's out of date or it, it, it has things that are offensive to me or whatever the case would be. And the moment that we try to start to change things or alter things, all of a sudden, it is not God's word anymore. But now, all of a sudden, it is what we want to say. Uh, you've seen, you can, you can see this with the rise of AI. People are actually using mm -hmm. AI to have a, a version of the Bible that suits their ideologies. And that basically means that they're making God in their own image, which that's not who God is. And so mm -hmm. it is that much more important for us to understand that This is not just an, an ancient text. This is the divine, inspired, all-powerful, living Word of God. And to your point, like you know, I you know, I have some of God's Word memorized, or I I know enough principles that I know how to live my life. But I can tell you, as someone who has been transformed by the Word of God, 
that I'll, I'll, I'll read a passage of scripture multiple times over the course of a few years. And every time I get something new, every time God speaks to me in a different way through his word. Mm. And so, uh, as, as it says, uh, in second Timothy, God, the word of God is living and active. It's, it's alive. It's, it's God breathed. And, uh, and that's, that's an important thing that we should take reverence with. Mm. And I feel when we have that, we have the joy in our hearts, right? Because what is going on and the society of Jews telling us they they know the values they have knowledge because probably uh, they're not going to the church or they're not reading the scriptures but they grow up at church hmm. but i can compare this uh to kind of people the people who's reading the bible every day you know have a connection have a relationship with god and the other one who's trying to live you know uh with being his own God, with all the knowledge, because they think they say, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a religious people. Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah. go to church, but they have exactly the same values <clears throat> and they don't have joy yeah. because we're going to ha have a hard times here. Right. It's, um, we're going to have tribulation. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like in the movie, oh my gosh, it's crazy how far we can go standing up and saying yes i'm a christian yes i'm gonna mm. fight for this and mm. it's this morning i was i want to fight with my husband right and I'm like for stupid things for small things <laughs> and i like okay we're in this together right and when i was i was watching the movie it was a reminder look what happened when people are fighting you know even when you're close and you're walking with god you know, because it's this beautiful um, couple. They're okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna support you, mm. but somehow she regrets. Like, are you sure we're gonna do this? How about if you know fear come over? Right. And it, you know, <clears throat> but yes. yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, you bring up so many good points because the Bible does not promise that we are going to have an easy life. Uh, mm. the, 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 we we are almost guaranteed hardship in life. Or guaranteed mm -hmm. turmoil. There's going to be fights between uh, husbands and wives and, and mm -hmm. families and friends. There's going to be dysfunction in, in society because we're all flawed human beings. No one is perfect. But the things that the thing that is so powerful about the Bible, to your point, I believe the reason that it brings joy is because it promises that Jesus will walk through those moments with us. We're not alone, mm -hmm. and that we, He's given us His Spirit and his word to be able to navigate those moments in life so that it's not terrible. It's not, um, hopeless. And, and to, and to the ultimate question of what, it, what would you even be willing to give up your life for this Bible or for this faith that you believe? Mm -hmm. Um, the, the, the Bible is very clear <clears throat> that God has given us assurance of eternity. God has given us assurance of his promises that he has fulfilled and and that that gives us hope that gives us joy and and that's one of the things that was so heavy on my heart uh in the making of this movie was that i wanted people to walk away from the experience with hope with purpose and uh with some direction on, on where to go in life and you know which one is the other one a legacy yes i cry and cry when you know the kid the father and the son saw everything the how they kill his yeah. father but it's a legacy yeah. and, and and that's how the movie star right we're not going to give so many spoilers spoiler <laughs> alert spoiler alert <laughs> um, yeah. yeah because we highly recommend this movie so uh, let's let's try it's to true. don't tell the end <laughs> yeah don't don't tell the end no that's a but that's a good point because I think it's going to be a hard pill to swallow for many people in America mm -hmm. because like if, if this happens in China, everybody kind of like expects like, oh, yeah, right. I mean, we smuggle Bibles into China. That's what we do as Christians, right? We send Bibles over there. But a future in America where that would happen, uh, I, I think we're so, so used to what we see around us that we're like, that's far fetched. Yeah. But some of the points that you bring in the movie... Yeah, I think that's why I was wrestling with it because, like, 
that can't really happen. But then I'm like, well, it's happening it, right it now. happens <laughs> in other places <laughs> yes. and it kind of starting to happen here. Mm. So I don't know if to that extent. Right. But can you speak into that? Like, what are the because I love like, you know, when we were watching is like, I wonder what that like enlightened Bible uh, type of thing would include right in for. I mean, I'm I'm just going to name a name. I'm I'm not even going to name names. No, but there's <laughs> there's there's people who claim they're pastors. Sure. Nowadays, and that have congregations and churches that follow them that read scripture and come away with 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 really what I mean. I would consider like far fetched ideas. You know, like oh, you can marry multiple people. Uh, polyamor as they call it right uh you know it's okay if you're in a uh, same-sex relationships you can marry all kinds of gender like all this sort of stuff that you know some people call it progressive christianity but it has that name right it has mm -hmm. still has the name christianity so uh yeah. in a sense i feel like man that that sounds kind of like an enlightened version <laughs> of of christianity in a sense is that is that some is that kind of like what you're witnessing in america or um Do we need to be concerned? Do you do you really see a future where where we're going in that direction? Yeah, one of the things that was very important uh, from the very beginning, Josh Tchaikovsky, the writer, and myself, that we we really tried to protect the script from getting to this idea that we were trying to predict that the the events that happen are going to happen no matter the you know what we say or do. Um, There's not. That's not really the the point of the movie. The point of the movie is not to say that um, in a very short amount of time that our Bibles are going to be taken away and we're going to be killed and we're going to be imprisoned. Could that happen? It's always a possibility because man is evil. Uh, so that that's definitely part of it. And we are we're seeing little by little religious freedom in the United States of America start to erode, and it's getting less and less. But the bigger question on my heart and my mind was, even if persecution doesn't come, what am I going to do now with the freedom that I have? Because mm -hmm. I see too many Christians silent and apathetic in the face of the freedoms that we do have. I see too many Christians silent and apathetic when, uh, when people are trying to redefine what is true. I think that's maybe potentially the, the most dangerous thing that I'm witnessing right now in real time is how this idea of relativism has so permeated our culture that people are, are redefining things that they, that have always existed to be true. Mm. And, and what's shocking and horrifying about it is that it's not just those who are not religious or lost or not believers. It's also people within the church to your point. This whole concept of progressive Christianity is just people trying to make God in their image. It's, it's not a new mm. parlor trick. They're just trying to change some things so that they can have their sin and Jesus. And that's not the, the message of the Bible. The message of the Bible is exclusive. It's die to yourself and let Jesus save you. It's not, you know, the fact that we... Uh, we, we don't need Jesus, and he comes in like a genie every once in a while to help us out when we want some help. It is a dying to self and asking him to come to help us because we're in desperate need of him. And and so that's that's the danger that I see, and that's the, the main warning of this movie, is that if we don't change the way that we're living, um, we're going we're gonna to see things like an enlightened truth Bible come to reality. We're going to see all kinds of chaos ensue in our culture and evil become more and more pervasive because people are unwilling to admit that there is an, an absolute mm -hmm. truth, an absolute guide in the form of the Holy Bible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, without spoiling, you know, part of the movie, but there's, there's two in really intense m moments. And uh, at least for me, right? Like my vantage point that, and one, I love that your brother is in the movie too. Like I just realized <laughs> that your, your brother in the movie is your actual brother in yeah. real life. That, that was really cool. Uh, but I love the dynamic of, of the two brothers wrestling with like, hey, maybe the enlightened mm -hmm. Bible is not so bad, you know? Right. And there's a scene, right, where <laughs> where people are in church. And what was so interesting is that, man, it sounded so much like church. Right. And it looked so much like church. Right. Right. And, people, and you looked at, I mean, if you're in that scenario, right, the people around them, look like people that go to church right <laughs> right 
So, and, and that's kind of like the danger maybe that you're, you're speaking about that, uh, the little tweaks to the scripture in a sense for like the common, the common people is like, Oh, that's not so bad. That's actually pretty good. Right. Yeah. It's, but, uh, how would you, uh, Uh, how would you speak into that maybe conflict in maybe within a family unit, right? Maybe we're experiencing that maybe with this like progressive Christianity or people uh, living, you know, this lifestyles that is like, well, you're not, you're not inclusive with me. You're not loving me because of my choice of lifestyle. Right. And how do you speak to that in, in light of like families who are kind of like split, yeah, right, because yeah. of their ideology. Yeah, I think families is maybe the most difficult situation that someone would find themselves in. Um, it's perhaps going to be easier for people to uh, deal with those conversations to a perfect stranger or to an acquaintance. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to family, when it comes to blood, um, and you have disagreements, that's where I think people are going to have the hardest time with some of this, these new ideologies because what we were trying to portray in the movie, I think is, is happening in real time. And that is mm -hmm. that people are wanting, they're, they're barely wanting to change anything. It's just little words here and there. And mm -hmm. the danger of this is that this is no different than what Satan did in the garden of Eden in Genesis chapter three. He said, he simply changed a couple words. He said, did God really say, And that now all of a sudden Eve is questioning everything that God had commanded her. I believe that part of the original root of sin being in the form of pride, it was also a disbelief of what God said and taking him at his word. So the moment that we start to, try to think that we are more intelligent, more enlightened, more tolerant or whatever than God, uh, then we're going to start to do things and we're going mm -hmm. to tweak little things here and there, but it's not going to look all that different. And that's the dangerous uh, illusion that I think has swept this country and blinded so many people. And the thing that's important, I think, when, when you're engaging in conversations with people, like potentially even family members, is that it's not tolerant and loving to let people l live in their sin. It's not tolerant and loving When you know the truth, to, to turn a blind eye and not help someone. If, uh, I, I like to use the example that if, if, so, if, I, if I knew or someone knew that I had cancer and they knew that it was going to kill me, but they didn't tell me about it. They didn't warn me. They didn't give me any kind of lifestyle change that could prevent the cancer from spreading. I'd be really mad at them. <laughs> I mean, granted, it's going to be a hard pill to swallow for someone to look at me and say, hey, you have cancer and you're dying. But it is also the most loving thing that someone could say to me. Uh, the gospel is not a message of hate. The gospel is a message of love. Now, granted, it points out that we are sinners and in desperate need of saving because without Jesus, it is a life separated from him from all, for all of eternity. Mm -hmm. And that is scary. But the message of the gospel is a message of love. It is this message that you were not destined for this. You were created mm -hmm. to be in a relationship with God. And God and Jesus made a way for that to happen. And so I think it's important for us to, you know, be observant that people want to kind of pigeonhole you and force you into the conversation by saying you're not tolerant. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not so much that I'm not tolerant. It's that I just am not willing to deny truth. And people may hate you for that. In fact, Jesus promised that if you abide by his teachings and abide by his way, his commands, his commandments, that people will hate you because they hated him first. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that's one of the other messages in the movie that we have to be willing for, to let people hate us. Uh, it's, it's, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world but forfeited his soul? Jesus said. And so those are some of the ideas that we try to present in the movie and that hopefully will spur on more conversation after people are done watching the movie and in those family environments uh, and in those uh, friendship conversations. That was so close. 
um, I'm, I feel I'm living that. You know, I feel the hate for my family. Um, we are so open, right? And we have the truth. And a lot of people, they don't like it. And they're mad. And, and when it's your family, it's so painful. But right. it's more painful for me to be quiet and not talk with truth. Right? Right. So uh, I feel like we need to step and believe that God is always working. And maybe at the moment they stop talking to us because they hate us. But we need to keep fighting with love to show them love. And we need to believe that our fight, it's not with the person. It's the devil, right? Yeah. And we win already. And I hear the other day, God was telling me that we need to fight from victory. Yeah. Not for victory. And that I received so much joy again. Yeah. And hope that, yeah, okay, they're not talking to me right now. I'm going to stay, you know, saying who is Jesus and what he wants from us, you know, because he's calling us to forgive. It's a lot of hate in this world. Yeah. And people who's been so hurt, they, they can have all the million reasons to be that way. But God is calling us to forgive. And the world doesn't want doesn't want that. They want to live with that. Like, guys, oh, it's mine. And, you yeah. know, we've received <clears throat> comments like, I don't want that. I don't want to forgive. It's my business. It's my problem. And that's who I am. And it's so sad. Yeah. Because I, that's our humanity. Right, right. Right. And I think the best example that we can model after is the way that Jesus lived. I mean, when you look at mm. the, the people that hated him the most, which was the Pharisees, mm. his own chosen <laughs> people, mm -hmm. his own mm -hmm. brethren, uh, they hated and reviled him and wanted to kill him. And what was what did Jesus say while on the cross? And I think that it was this was meant for not only the Romans who were actually the ones physically killing him, but for the Jews who were there mocking him. He said, "Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing." Mm -hmm. Even while he's paying for the sin of the world, he chooses love and forgiveness over mm -hmm. hate. And yes. that is there. There can be no greater demonstration or model for us to. Uh, to take in those moments for, for what you are experiencing in your own life. I mean, I can't imagine how difficult that is. But at the same time, I do understand the power of love and forgiveness demonstrated through the person of Jesus. And um, that goes beyond this life. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Wow. Okay, Brett, how... Um, I mean, you, you've done like some previews. I even saw like you have Mike Pence showed up to your movie, you know, and left a review. It's on, on the website. Um, so what are some of the, maybe even, I don't know if you have experience like criticism, but I imagine like being in this industry, right? Like the film industry <laughs> and producing movies and telling stories. Um, it, it, we know America, right? We know our <laughs> culture. We know where we're at. We know the type of content that's being produced and put out there. How do you live in that tension? You know, how, how, do you need to have specific friends in this industry? Do you need to be like super open when you encounter, you know, hey, my, the guy with the camera, you know, he's a non-believer. He believes like actually maybe all the opposite that we're filming. I don't know. Right. But how do you wrestle with, with that in this industry, in our culture, in today's day and age? Yeah. The, the interesting thing about uh, Disciples in the Moonlight is it is a very polarizing movie. Um, we have we have received some of the, the highest praise that you can get for someone seeing a movie. And we've also received some of the harshest hate-filled criticism uh, from people who've never seen the movie. Uh, people who just see the trailer and think that it's just a bunch of Christian propaganda. They call it hateful. They call it divisive. Um, and the, and, and what I've encountered, you know, on film sets that I've been on, and I've been blessed to be an actor and a director on a multitude of different film sets. And I'm working with people who are believers and non-believers. And what I find most interesting is more often than not, when you can simply just engage in an honest human conversation, mm -hmm. that's not, uh, based on prejudice or, uh, people's agendas, but it's just two human beings 
having a, 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 a lovely conversation together, people get to understand who I am and what I believe and why I believe it. And even though they may disagree with me, there's at least a, a, an exchange of respect. And we have lost that in our society. And uh, that's one of the things that, you know, I, I kind of have to uh, just, I, I, have to, I have to not really pay attention to a lot of the comments that we receive online, uh, especially for a movie like Disciples in the Moonlight, because these people don't know me. Uh, they've never even seen the movie. So, and, and I don't even think that it's really my ability or my job to change people's minds. Uh, it's my job to be faithful. It's my job to present what I know to be true and let the Holy Spirit work in people's lives. Um, one of the reasons that I've named my production company House of Grace Studios was based off of the healing at the Pool of Bethesda from John chapter 5, where this man went to the pool thinking that that's where he was going to get healing, hmm. but he came into, into contact with the Savior of the world who was the one who gave him healing. And so I want to create movies, which is a lot of where people go nowadays for consumption of entertainment and, and, and information and knowledge. And that's where I want to present to them the Savior. The movie cannot do anything for their life, but the truth in the movie can save them. And so uh, that's that's kind of how I've been able to combat this this entertainment industry is just to try to be as authentic and real as who I am, um, engage in conversation with people if they're willing. And they may not want to have anything to do with me, and that's fine. Um, I don't serve them. I serve the almighty, all-powerful God of the universe, and he loves me. And and that's that's what really gives me every bit of purpose in what I do. Love it. Millie, okay, a final word before we go to the emojis. Do you have anything? I'm so happy that you know who you are. Mm. That's amazing. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, I just have, as Latinos, I would love for you to speak maybe to the Latino audience. Yeah. And either, you know, if you want to invite them to the movie, invite them to Jesus, like, what are your words for the Latinos here in the U.S.? And maybe, like, there's people that tune in you know, from Argentina and other places. Yeah. Just uh, if you could speak to Latinos, what would you say? I would say that you are made in the image of God. I would say that God, God created you with a purpose and he wants to know you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And no matter what you're facing in life, nothing is bigger than our God. And uh, and I, I hope that whether you're here in the United States to be able to see Disciples in the Moonlight or eventually, Lord willing, we will be distributing this movie internationally all over the world, um, that you would be able to see this movie and, and come into contact with the truth of this movie. Because I believe the truth in this movie can change your life. And, uh, and so Lord willing, we will have the, those opportunities available worldwide, but especially for those of you in the United States of America, flood the theaters on July 17th and see this movie in person and see what God has for you in this movie. Love it. All right. So now what we're going to do is going to wrap up the episode with our emojis. Okay. <laughs> so we bring back the emojis here on the screen and you can either like recap or think of the future or take it whatever you want to take it you know even just, if you want to say who you are be who you <laughs> are if you want to talk about something completely different you can do so if you want to just laugh that's okay so whatever you want to take it we're gonna go to the first emoji it's the blasphemous emoji okay so okay. according to Brett barbell what is the most blasphemous idea out there I would say the most blasphemous idea is that we are smarter than God and we can change his law. Wow. wow. That, that is intense. Um, skeptical emoji, what are you still skeptical of or where do you see skepticism played out? I'm skeptical that AI is going to really change and improve our lives. Mm, wow. That's a good one. Inspired emoji, where do you see hope? I see hope in God's people uh, being faithful. I see hope that uh, that there could be a movement that sweeps across this world for people who would be willing to say, I'm a disciple of Jesus. Love it. What's a holy idea, according to Brett Barbell? A holy idea um, that we were bought with a price 
and that our life is not our own. Okay, Mili, you you him about the last one. <laughs> about the divine idea. Uh, the divine idea, uh, the greatest news that's ever happened, that's ever been given to me, is that I was not left in my sin, and that because of Jesus Christ, not only am I saved and redeemed now, but I have the promise of eternal life mm -hmm. with the one who made me, and I will get to spend all eternity with him and millions and millions of other people who have been changed by God. Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> Millie, do a little quick prayer, okay? For Brett and for his ministry, for his producing company, and maybe for the people that are going to watch his productions. <laughs> Thank you, God, for this space. Thank you, God, for our lives. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your amazing and unending love. Thank you um, because you're going to use this movie to reach out hearts. Thank you because you are the one who's going to transform hearts. Prepare all these people, Jesus, for that transformation. You are the one who works for us and through us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to transform the world for your glory. Thank you for our purpose. Thank you for our gifts that are given to you. Everything we have is yours, God. Take this beautiful project and all the beautiful people who's working on it. Ultimately, you are the one who brought this movie, Jesus. How many people have these dreams and they never complete it? Thank you so much for this movie. Open doors and close doors for your glory, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Millie. Hi, Brett. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for being with us, shedding some light on on the ideas behind this movie. I just want to invite everybody to go watch Disciples in the Moonlight. Go to the theaters. That's a great way to support. I'm assuming eventually it'll be available like on streaming and all of those. But go support because I know it's important to go support um, actual like theater showing, right? Yes. So go do that. And where do you want to point people to if they want to find out more about maybe your house production, your projects, what you do, Brett? Yeah. So you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Brett Barbel. Uh, you can follow us uh, at, on Facebook and Instagram as well at Disciples in the Moonlight. We encourage people to go to fathomevents.com. That's where you can buy tickets now for the theatrical run in the movie and theaters. July 17th through the 24th is where the movie is showing in over a thousand theaters across the United States of America. We, it would bless our hearts so much. It really does make a big deal for us to be able to create more content like this if you show up to buy a ticket at the theater. Awesome. Thank you, Brad. God bless you. Uh, we'll see you maybe in the future. All, All right. right. Thank you good. for being here. Take care. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye.